Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Fishing with James. This is episode 3 of my hand tied jig series, and today I'll be showing you how to tie a crappie jig that I call Orange Cream. And at the end of this video, I'll be throwing it in my fish tank to give you all some underwater footage. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started, and as always, everything you'll need to tie this jig can be found in the description of this video. The jig head I'll be using today is a half and half orange and white Protec painted jig head. And I also decided to stick some 3 16th inch eyes on the side of it. So to start off, we're going to lay a thin Thin line of super glue down to the point of the hook and wipe up any excess that's left at the top of the head. Next we're going to take our thread and begin wrapping it all the way up to the head of the jig and our stopping point is going to be down at the point of the hook that is my mark point to stop wrapping thread and we're going to go all the way back up to the head of the jig. Next we're going to take our thread and cut the tag end off right there. Now I've taken a segment of white marabou feather and I've actually wet it to make it a little bit easier to work with. And once I've got it sized up right, I'm going to take my thread and make a very loose loop around it so it doesn't move it out of place, cinch it down to the hook, and I'm going to wrap my thread about two thirds of the way down to the hook point. And then I'm going to take my thread and go all the way back up to the head of the jig. Once I finish that, I'm going to take a similar sized piece of orange marabou feather and do the same thing, a very loose loop to get it wrapped, cinch it down to the jig, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's where I want it and wrap it down again to the same spot as the white feather, two thirds of the way, give or take, down to the point of the hook. Once I've got the feathers how I like them, I'm gonna take a piece of orange tinsel cut in half and size it up right at the head of the jig and get them about evened out. Once I have it evened out, I'm gonna take my thread and wrap the tinsel down to the same point that I've wrapped the feathers to and I'm going to hold it with the feathers just so it stays even on the jig. At this point in the process, I'm going to trim the tinsel to match it with the feathers in terms of length. And with that, it's time to start on the body of the jig. And for the belly, I'm going to be using a piece of white chenille. So I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping this down to the same point that I've tied the feathers. It's very important to keep this in the very middle of the jig if you can. It makes the end a lot easier. At this point, we're going to take the white chenille, make sure that there's no feathers stuck to it or anything and we're gonna pull it past the head of the jig. And now we're gonna take our scissors and trim it just a little bit past the head. This is just giving us a little bit of wiggle room for the end of the jig. You'll see what I mean. Next up is the main body color, which is orange for this jig. So we're gonna take our orange chenille, and again, just like the white chenille, wrap it to the side of the jig. It doesn't really matter where this goes, but we're gonna tie it down to the same point that we've done the feathers and the white chenille. Once we've got that, we're just gonna wrap our thread all the way back up to the head of the jig. Now I'm just gonna use the rotary function on my vise to slowly spin the chenille up the jig. And this chenille's thick enough that I'm only gonna do one layer, but I'm gonna wrap it all the way up to the head, and once I see that I've gotten it where I want to, I'm gonna take my thread and cinch the orange chenille down to the body of the jig by going up underneath it then one wrap by the head of the jig, I'm going to go back under the orange chenille, another wrap by the head, one more wrap up under the orange chenille, and then just a few more loops by the head to secure everything. Now I'm just going to take my scissors and trim the chenille as close as I can to the body without damaging anything. I'm going to pull off any extra fluffy bits that I've left. And on this jig, I left a little bit more chenille sticking out than I wanted to, so I'm just going to take my thread and wrap that into the jig, no problem. Now it's time to make the belly of the jig. So I'm going to take my white chenille and again pull off any of the feathers that might be stuck to it and I'm going to pinch it up to the head of the jig. Now this is very important to make sure to keep it in the middle of the jig because if it's off to the side at all, the belly of the jig will be diagonal. Once I have the chenille positioned like I want it, I'm going to hold it very firmly so it doesn't move and I'm gonna take my thread and make a very loose loop around the top of it. This is just to make sure it doesn't get pulled off to either side. Once I have that loop, I'm gonna cinch it down to the jig so that it stays in one spot. I'm just gonna do a few loops on both sides of the chenille here. Now that I have that done, it's time to trim up the white chenille just like we did the orange. I'm just gonna cut it as close as I can to the belly and pull off any bits that want to come out. Same as before, if there's any bits that are sticking out like that piece right there, I can just take my thread and wrap it into the jig a little bit more. Now all that's left to do is perform a whip finish on the jig and then it is going to be finished up. We're just going to pop the hook out, pull that thread right there, and then take our scissors and trim it right there. So there you have it, the orange cream crappie jig. As you can see that white chenille is off in one direction a little bit 
it is so easy for that to happen. So you have to make sure that you take your time with those wraps. Now make sure to stick around because I have some underwater footage coming up, but I just wanted you guys to be able to get a closer look at the finished product of this jig. And with all of that, now let's go ahead and jump to my fish tank and I'll show it to you underwater. So here it is in the water. As with all hand tied jigs, the feather moves around a bunch even when it's sitting still to give it a lot of action. The orange tinsel creates a lot of flash and overall I think it's a solid color combination. Here's another view of the jig in some more open water. So if you stuck around until now, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you are new, make sure to hit that subscribe button and share this video with a friend that you think would enjoy this jig. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next episode of Hand Tied Jigs.